What's going on guys, welcome back. I haven't had time to come out to the shop lately, but here we are. So when I left you guys last time, I told you I was gonna put this engine back in the truck, so that's what we've done. And if you look closely, there's no more a piece of square tube sitting in there holding the transmission up. Those mounts are in place, the engine's bolted in, this thing's in there and ready to go. Now those mounts actually squished down quite a bit more than I thought they would, and that left us with quite a bit of room uh, between the firewall and that tandem pump. So I'm happy about that. Uh, it's sitting in there just really well. I'm, I'm really happy how those mounts came out, so that's good. You've probably already noticed that this turbo is now sticking straight up, so I loosened off this compressor housing and I just tapped that guy up with a mallet. I clocked that right up to uh, parallel with the engine. That's gonna work a lot better with the intercooler. Now onto the intercooler, I've made a discovery there. So here's the intercooler that I was going to use. I was super excited to put this guy in the truck because this actually came out of a forklift with a Volkswagen TDI. It's basically the same as an ALH out of a 2000 or 2003 Jetta or Golf, but a different engine code, it's an industrial version, but same displacement. So. That was perfect. That literally came off of a TDI and it was gonna be going onto a TDI, but it's far too wide. So here's the radiator I'm gonna be using for the swap. This actually came out of a truck with a three liter V6, the same exact truck as this, just not four cylinder. Uh, so the mounts and everything are the exact same. My new buddy Jesse gave this to me for free actually, hopefully not for a reason. Uh, it's not working for his small block Chevy swap. As you can imagine, that radiator would be much too small for an engine like that, but uh, it should be perfect for what I'm using it for. Now you see how I have this intercooler kind of straddling this radiator. That was my intention with that intercooler. I thought, man, that would be perfect. I have a, the inlet and outlet coming right out around the sides of the radiator, but this dang Toyota is just so small. That would put the inlet and outlet right by my headlight buckets, and I'd have to cut into this core support quite a bit. It's just, it's just not gonna work for, for what I want, which is super unfortunate because I had high hopes for that intercooler. So instead, what I had to do was order a intercooler off of Amazon. I actually went with a same side in and out. So that will make it uh, actually a lot easier for this TDI because the turbo and the intake are both on the same side of the engine. Just makes more sense. I know it was a good idea to use that TDI intercooler, but it's just not gonna work out for my layout. Before I do any more talking, let's throw this radiator in the truck and I'll show you how this intercooler is not gonna work, but I'll also show you how the new one is going to work. So I know what you're thinking, it really does look like it's leaking right around there. I'm hoping it's not, and I think that there's just some water spilled on it because it's not coolant. And I don't remember it being there when I grabbed the radiator, but worst case scenario, we just buy a new one. So I've got the camera zoomed in here, and I'm just gonna hold this intercooler up. Now another thing is it's a little bit too fat in the depth dimension. So see how it just doesn't, doesn't really fit in there nicely. It's hitting the power steering cooling lines. It's hitting the cab, the body over here. So we'd have to do quite a bit of cutting, moving steering lines, moving this reservoir. It just, it's not gonna fit in there nicely. So unfortunately, we're not gonna go with this one. Uh, but that same side in and out intercooler if you've ever seen one of those they just look like a conventional rectangular intercooler but they have the inlet and the outlet on the same side which is going to work great for our setup here we're just gonna to have to space this radiator out so this is where the rubber meets the road the swap gets interesting from here on out uh, we've done what I think is the easy part, getting the engine in here and bolted up. Um, now we gotta screw with all the little stuff. 
Do you remember this alternator bracket that I was talking about? Well, I kind of forgot that it also houses the power steering pump and the clutch for the fan, the belt tensioner, etc. This is an accessory bracket. It does more than just the alternator. Now, I hope I'm not eating my words here, but it did fit on the block with that mount. What it doesn't fit is down beside the frame. That power steering pump is basically inside that frame rail, which no bueno. That's kind of okay with me because that little tiny Passat power steering pump, this guy here, it's puny. There's no way, at least in my opinion, that that thing is going to turn those giant monstrous 37s, especially if they're wedged between some rocks or logs or something. I, I think that, that we're just wasting time to use that Volkswagen pump. This is where this crusty guy comes in. So this is the AC compressor mount bracket that goes over on the passenger side of the engine, right there in that hole. So what I'm planning to do with this is my buddy that I sold my 22 RE to, he's got a couple of Toyota power steering pumps. I'm going to do my best to adapt one of those to this bracket. Luckily enough, I already have this tensioner here that's going to give me a good baseline for alignment of the pulley. Now that's a V-belt on the Toyota pump, whereas this is a serpentine belt, so we're gonna have to figure out an adapter for the pulley, but we'll get to that when we get to that. That means that I'm gonna have to move this power steering fluid reservoir over onto the other side here, move that fuse box around. We got a lot of stuff to do here. There's a couple bumps in the road, but I think it's good to get it figured out now instead of running into it down the road. Also means we're gonna have to do something funky with these power steering lines. They're gonna have to come across the engine bay, but I'm not afraid of that. Uh, let's just take our time and get this right. So I'm currently waiting for parts, including that intercooler. Uh, a couple elbows for plumbing up the intercooler. So <clears throat> that stuff should be in the mail in the next couple days, but until then we can just tittle up some little things. So let's throw this accessory bracket in the vise and get to cutting. This is what we're dealing with. Let's see what we need to trim up. So it mounts the block like this. If you'll notice, it's hitting at that very bottom casting down there. The one with that metal sleeve in it. So I think if we just lop that guy off, uh, it should fit right in there. Now I know this seems a bit destructive, but we're not even using this Volkswagen steering pump. so. I'm not too worried about it. I really like this accessory bracket and I wanna keep that with the TDI, so I'm fine cutting it up. Always a good time when I get to use my buddy the Sawzall. What do you mean, man? It came like that. So that should fit in there a little bit better now. So it does fit on there. Uh, we're still a little bit close, so I'll probably just grind it down a bit. So I just ground the slightest bit off on the corner there, and now it fits in there real nice, so. Okay, so we got that bolted up. I'd say that there's no less room between that guy and the frame than there is with that oil cooler just above it there. So I think that that's going to be plenty of room. Time to throw this alternator back on. I'm sure I'm gonna to have to take some of this stuff off, but I just wanna get it bolted up on there so that I can see if I gotta move anything else. Okay, so I think I've got the alternator figured out. Uh, I just bolted it back up how it was in the car, but I removed the idler with the fan hub from right here, and I also removed the tensioner. Now, I think what I'm gonna do is just run a stretch belt, and that's a type of serpentine belt 
that's just slightly shorter than the distance around these two pulleys and the distance between. And what you do is you just put it on and you put it half over either the crank pulley or the alternator and then you roll it over and it stretches onto the pulleys. They work really well. I've seen them lots on machines like uh, heavy machinery. So I think that's what we're gonna do for that. Just remembered before we go any further, I wanna get the lower rad hose in and that goes right behind that giant alternator bracket. So I'm just going in through the driver's side fender well here and you can see I've staged the thermostat and o-ring up in there. It's just right there. So now I have to snake this hose in, uh, which I have right here. It's a preformed hose with the thermostat housing attached to it. Uh, this is a Volkswagen thing. I like to do things the most complicated way possible. So this is one inch on this end ID. I'm gonna have to adapt that to a little piece of pipe and then to a more common one and a quarter or one and three eighths. But we'll figure that out once we get the uh, intercooler in there and we do all the other piping. I'm gonna throw this thing in there and do my best to film it, but it's gonna be rough. This is pretty tight going in through here. Okay, so I was able to get that water outlet in there. You can see it there bolted to the block. Uh, I got it tightened up and just the hose routed out down past the engine mount there. So we'll have to adapt that, like I said, but uh, we got her in there, almost forgot. Well, I feel like this is just the episode of dilemmas. Here's the starter. I'm just kind of knocking off random stuff that uh, we can do before all those parts come in. This guy's kind of funky. It's got two mounting bolts, uh, but you can clock it in the uh, bell housing adapter. So you'll see that there's two sets of bolt holes drilled there. I'm sure if I made the mounts differently, I could use it in its intended form, which is uh, this way. But the way that I have the mount, the butt of the starter hits it. So I got to put it in this way. Well, then that drain is upside down. Put it in like this. Everything jives nicely, doesn't hit anything. But if I put it in the other way around, just like this, you'll notice it doesn't want to go in because it hits that mount. Well, that's a problem. So <clears throat> I think what we can do is just take off that cadmium coated back cover uh, hopefully everything doesn't go spring and sprung and fly everywhere and I never find it again. But I think we can just take it off and clock it because this drain, this drain just needs to point down instead. I've had a couple of starters apart before and I believe that these two Phillips head screws hold the, uh, the brushes in the back here. So as long as I remove those screws, when I pull this cap off, that shouldn't come with it. It should, the brush tension should stay on the uh, commutator strip instead of just falling apart. So famous last words. That's exactly what we were looking for. So now I'm just gonna take this guy, spin it 180 like this, put it right back on. I'm not gonna leave that off for too long because that's when things go flying. All right, well that about does it for today's video. Not much going on today. Hopefully by next video we'll have those parts. They should actually be here tomorrow. So uh, <clears throat> I'd like to have all of the coolant lines and charge air lines done in next video. But we got the starter in there. We got the alternator bracket figured out. We have a good idea of what we're gonna do for power steering. So I still think that that's progress. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. As always, until next time, take it easy. Thank you.